All right. Hi, everybody. I'll go ahead and get us started since it looks like I'm first on the agenda. Um, so I want to talk about the design system push that we're doing that all of you are familiar with. I just wanted to kind of close out on it. And I see that uh, Tim Zalman is also on the call. So Tim, please jump in on any of this. Um, so first of all, I wanted to say thank you to everyone. Uh, we've got a ton of enthusiasm and momentum around moving JAMAs forward. So honestly, that's one of the most important aspects of the project. So thank you for your passion. Um, I'm really excited to see how this evolves over time. Um, so CSS cleanup. Um, actually, I'm going to turn this over to Tim because I basically what I was going to say is this is happening. Thank you so much for an engineering team. <laughs> but Tim can talk to the specific. Thanks a lot, Christy. Um, yeah, so as we are doing already tons of or have done a tons of CSS stuff and GitLab API stuff and all is rolling, the idea was to, especially with the new model of working groups, to actually form a team of people who are driving the topic along the already planned and decided roadmap. So that simply someone is in the driving seat and is creating those uh, issues that are needed and uh, pushing the work across the whole organization, especially engineering. Um, and the steps that we already decided uh, in February are the main drivers in the roadmap. That means really that we are split up the roadmap in three different steps. And the idea is that the working group is simply creating the issues along that uh, road, is uh, seeing that we are following all the different stops uh, steps that we have everything in place that we need for linters, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the team at the moment um, is a couple of front-end engineers with uh, Philippa, Phil, Denise, Sarah, and Simon. And at the moment from the, for the UX side, it's Christy and Tori. Um, and we can see that we also extend the team if, uh, if someone is really super interested and we need some specific expertise, et cetera. And if you take a look at the epic that is linked, um, there I started today on simply collecting all the different issues that are already are out there and decided to bring them under one roadmap. Um, and especially for the CSS stuff, it's really about we uh, retranslated that phrase from something which sounded a little bit rougher to stop the cascading. Uh, so the idea is really to stop first that we are adding more and more CSS that we would need to clean up at some point or remove or figure out what we should do with it. So the idea was to add Stylint uh, as we only had like a quite old uh, gem in place so far for linting of, uh, of CSS. We have now Stylint, which enabled us to write also our own plugins. There are some plugins now in place that are best practices. practices. Um, those are already fixed uh, for the most important cases, but we also have tons of warning. So for each and every file that we currently have in our code base for the uh, SCSS files, we have now warnings about too much nesting. If we have stuff that is actually duplicated, so we have in two different spots in the same file, two different classes, which actually do exactly the same. Uh, we do linting about utility classes. So this means if some classes that were invented are actually there to do exactly the same thing that our utility classes already can do, then we also warn about that stuff. And those linters uh, and additional danger rules that we want to implement so that really say, okay, please don't add anything more to our page specific CSS stuff. If you are not really, 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 really sure about it, perhaps we need also to create a really complex form that people need to fill out before they are allowed to do anything like that. But that's basically step one. Step two, uh, and that will be uh, the main work now of the, of the working group. And the first step is really create issues per CSS files um, and create based on the danger rules, but also on best practices, like a checklist per file. So this means there will be one issue per file uh, on page specific CSS, which will tell you, okay, please remove all the warnings that are there for, that are there through stylings. Uh, please take a look. Can we replace some of, uh, some of the CSS that we have created here with something that we anyhow have in a generic way for a component? Are there parts that we actually can delete because it's, they are not used at all? It's really hard to do mapping of our CSS against the source code as we have different types of source code, so we can't really use automated tools. So this would be also simply a manual task to simply take classes and search for the code base and see 
if there is anything that is actually using that stuff. I've seen some classes and removed them already in the past, so I would I would guess that there, there are more. And then the last step, which is also uh, an important topic in the overall performance, is we have a lot of CSS written in those page-specific files, which is really just page-specific, but they leaked out over time. So this meant means that some people said, okay, there is something that we implemented for boards, but you know what? This class is already great. I will also use it in a different page, which makes it hard to simply take that file and just load it on the boards page, for example. So the target of the engineer, um, and we are also very happy and are spreading out the invitation to all UXs to also let us know if you're interested to pick up some of those files to simply learn more about it with some coaching there, um, is really to figure out are those cloud classes all used on the boards? Then yeah, let's go create a specific bundle out of it, it's super easy. And then only that CSS stuff is only loaded on that page and not on all the pages because right now we have one humongous CSS file that is loading. All the CSS for 85% of all the CSS that was ever written on every page. And this is also something which is definitely not great for performance. And during this manual task, we want to do that. So if we have 40 engineers working on that, everyone does like two, three files. We already have like those 120 files that we currently have in the CSS code base. This is step number two. And uh, this is something that we really want to tackle over the next weeks. Um, and then we come really to step number three, which is the main part that where discussion started so far. And there is no actual detailed plan on how to do things, except some ideas that currently go in the direction of taking all the generic stuff and everything that is reusable out of GitLab, GitLab CE and move it to GitLab UI. Why? There are a couple of issues out there because simply it makes it easier to have the CSS next to the component. We can put visual screenshot testing on top of it. We have something really that is generically usable and can be reused throughout the product so that we basically move everything to GitLab UI and only the page specific stuff is left in CE. And due to step one and two, we should have at that point already way, 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 way less CSS on page specific level. And by driving that through the working group and scaling the out, the out, still the work is for everyone. It's not that those poor souls now need to go through CSS for months, I know. And Annabelle can tell us a little bit of the tales that happened back then. Uh, so uh, that's definitely not the target. The target is that we are scaling it out, but the working group is really driving that by creating those issues and doing that stuff. So yeah, any questions? Yeah, that, that's a good point. And that's why we need to do it in spring actually and not in summer. So that's also like a push for it. And uh, I, I think that that should work quite well. Um, I can't remember if you already said this or not, but for, for page specific, for, for, for styles that are in page specific files that shouldn't be there, where are they getting moved to? Like I know we have the framework folder, but is that something that we're continuing? I would see it like I have taken a look for like two days on the CSS and I think there's a tons of things that can be regrouped simply under components. So either or through a combination of utility classes. So add the generic bootstrap uh, label class to it, add a helper to move it the five pixels over and you're done and then you can delete the whole uh, custom class that you have in there. I think there is a lot of stuff that can actually be simply replaced by taking those classes to the files and uh, getting rid of custom stuff that is not that custom in reality. Um, the, everything else, yes, there can still be stuff for a page specific and it's really about this should be a time boxed endeavor. So this should not be that an engineer sits at this for the next three weeks and their mind is blown, but rather like take a look, have this checklist, go through the checklist and do it as good as possible. If we are able to remove like 10% per CSS file, that's already a lot. And I expect that it's way more simply the, the way that the strange thing is that the styling is not counting errors uh, or warnings. So I don't have an uh, overview, but I think there are more than a thousand warnings that you simply can go through and say, okay, I replaced this with blah, 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 which is a really nice work that you can do with a coffee in hand. And um, yeah, and just by replacing as much as we can in this first sweep, 
I think we are already in a much nicer place so that we don't have this cascading stuff where we basically push something five pixels there, seven pixels there, three pixels there, and two pixels at the end to the top and wonder why something is breaking. Uh, so I think that's, that's the pragmatic approach. I have a question for you, Tim. Um, we've been talking about having each, like can each uh, stage group team pick up one component per release. How does that factor in with the spring cleaning? That is something that can happen afterwards. I think uh, what I was trying also to put out there in the component roadmap at the end of the epic is really that we that we split up the topics that we currently combine a lot in, in our discussions, which is like implementing on the code side a view bootstrap component or a bootstrap component in general and get it styled. And I would like to split that simply in the terms of, okay, this is one topic and that's the other topic. And having then in reality a third stage, I think that would be a great job also for uh, handing it out for an automated way in those issues as we do it with the spring, spring cleaning. But I would really say that we have like step one, stop the cascading, we are already almost done, spring cleaning, and then we get to the uh, styling of the components. Because if we would start now with really the styling, then we would run into problems again as we have those overlaps, remove something, it looks worse again and different, etc. And getting those stuff then into the product depends on the component. I've seen some components where you simply need to replace it in seven different places and you're done. This is something that someone that is actually implementing the component can do right away. But there are also especially the, the more layout focused components and grid stuff that is more like going all over the place. Um, that is something I would target as we do it now with the EE to CE move and with the spring cleaning. Create really simple tickets, create really simple issues that someone can pick up, can do in a day and off we go and, and, and try to really drive that through the, the, the team of the working group. So just to follow up, in our last UX meeting, we were saying that front-enders would be picking up a component in 11.11. Um, .11. That, is that reasonable with the spring cleaning or are you thinking that this is going to happen after the spring cleaning? which is likely not going to be by 11.11, I imagine. It sounds like it's not likable. I, I would need to take a look uh, at it uh, in detail what components we are trying to do. I think there are some ways if we are saying, okay, we are taking the rep component, which is not styled yet, and try to replace it across the board. That would be something that is doable if we all are on the same page that this is not fully 100% styled at that moment, and then we get have but have the advantage that we already are using the same component in like 100 places and then style it at the end and in 100 places it's like magic uh, pretty uh, then this is can be doable uh, but i think we should take a look uh, you're totally right if we have this in a big stake uh, overlapping with the spring cleaning plus doing a couple of components at the same time could be problematic but on the other hand we are now 38 front end engineers please Remind me, so there are a lot of people out there that, that can really jump in and as, as smaller did we do the issues, the easier it should be uh, to actually jump on those and really take and replace stuff and uh, test it out if it still works and, and all is good. But yeah, and the, the original thing that we were talking about in the UX call was just the build out of the component in GitLab UI with the correct styling, not necessarily implementation, that would come later. Does that affect your answer at all or if we are talking about full styling depends again on the component there are mm -hmm. I, I as i did my research there are some components that i've inflicted and using so many classes that they are really like we have this layer model so sometimes it took me like exaggerated but like half an hour to scroll through the list of classes that are applied to that thing to get to actually the component uh, styling and it, but there are also some other class, uh, other things like the, the skeleton loader, which was only done quite recently. So that has like a class, there's perhaps utility classes, but there is not that much stuff that is cascading on top. And it's super easy. Then you already have like, you can take and style that thing without having the problem that you need to restyle it three times again, as soon as you get it into the product. Cool, thanks.
So is the spring cleaning, is that happening right now in, uh, what are we in, 11.10? Yes, so the idea is right now that uh, uh, Philippe will and uh, the others will start with creating one example issue inside. We are having a call that I still need to set up. Hopefully we can get one done for our first day. There we will create one issue for one file as an example, give that to one person, uh, one front-end engineer, figure out do they actually understand everything? Is there everything in there, et cetera? If that works, boom, we go and create the most probably, hopefully, automatic uh, for each file, create one issue, and then get started with handing them out. Sounds good. I'm really excited for this. Really That's good. Excited. Great to Especially from someone who was doing so much CSS work and so much refactoring on top of that. Um, yeah, but this yeah. one's going to work. I can feel it. <laughs> it's called spring cleaning. We have to do it in spring. Otherwise, it's, <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. So let's get it done. Cool. Anything else? Otherwise, I'm handing back to Christy. And you did, you, you covered all of my points and you did it better than I would have. So thank you very much. Yeah, I'll turn it over to Dennis. Cool. Uh, thanks, Christy. So just a couple of items just to move things forward. One is the that's kind of in a pattern of extreme values. Sounds weird. Um, extreme instances of the UI usage uh, where we have, um, thank you. Uh, I get distracted with chat, I'm sorry. Uh, things with translations like German will push the to do button on the top right sidebar of like issues and merge requests over and then I know we're also exploring abbreviation of extreme numbers where it's like, okay, if we have whatever, a million stars, does it really matter if we have a million 13,468 or do we just want to abbreviate it? Um, and then also I more for my own amusement included this screenshot, which I've already turned into an issue of uh, the epics view and linking issues to it and having a more extreme case of that. So the, uh, short story or the short question I want to ask is, is there an issue epic to track the efforts for handling extreme values in the UI? If not, I will create that one. Um, just so we can kind of um, whatever, keep kind of a, a, an eye on, or at least have a way to track these things. Maybe a label is better, but I'm also open to suggestions, but I just kind of wanted to put the feelers out there. Um, Good point about Chinese being much more dense. Uh, I was thinking the epic name could be like GitLab Extreme UI. But anyways, uh, feel free and to chime epic, in. And epic sounds like a really good idea. So we can have individual issues uh, related to each one. I don't think one exists already. At least I'm not aware of one. Cool. Well, I'll label it as such, again, for my own amusement. And then we can also figure out something else better, if that's the case. Um, Cool, thanks. So I will add that as an action item. But for my next point, uh, there was a merge request that Nathan was putting together to modify the border radius for um, all form inputs. And so one of the concerns that was brought up by a maintainer uh, in that merge request is like getting buy-in from UX and front end in terms of uh, making sure we're okay making these, these changes that are kind of affecting the UI as a whole. So that issue that I've linked to was created after that merge request was put together. So the question I have and um, is, is this the right place to track these kind of reconciliations between the design system and what's currently there? Or is it better to maybe perhaps put that in the design system itself in terms of um, like what we intend to have it as, and then the, the UI can adjust for that just to make sure that um, maintainers and anyone involved with these merge requests or changes are, can be confident that like, okay, if we're updating this to be global, we, we have a single source of truth and like, that's that. I don't know if anyone has any thoughts there, um, but I'm also happy to create an issue somewhere so that we can continue that conversation. Does this, does this issue relate directly to point three within Tim, the Epic Tim linked the future CSS to kind of bring the two closer together. I imagine they are very similar, if not the same, correct? That's a good point. Yes, that's definitely something we should uh, pick up there and, and drive that along that we have really 
clear answers to it there and get that uh, nailed down where we need to adapt or where something is off. Um, I will link it in the Epic also, that issue specifically. Cool. Yeah, just that way we can at least reincorporate everything back into single search tree. Um, cool. Thanks. Uh, on to Pedro. Thanks, Dennis. Uh, I just wanted to share and also ask for um, front-end developers' feedback and, and also UX designers' feedback on what are the best ways you've found um, to do UX reviews on merge requests. We this started in a Slack thread and I started listing out some of the things that I usually use and that other people have mentioned. So uh, we have GDK, um, which can be, it's, it's usually or was the default way uh, and you had to set everything up, but depending on the complexity of the merge request and its setup, sometimes it's easier to try one of the other methods uh, and it can be as simple as a screenshot, which works really well for simpler merge requests that you don't have a lot of states and edge cases. Um, sometimes you need to do a review call, uh, not only to before the work starts, but also when you're already reviewing the implementation by the front-end developer, um, it works really well uh, for a larger and more complex merge requests. And also when you have to set up a lot of different things. Um, then one of the things I personally have tried with Kushal, for example, was uh, setting up an ngroc I don't know if that's how you say it, but ngroc tunnel, um, so that I could do the UX review, um, you could say async, so I, he doesn't have to stop his work for us to do a review call, he's implementing, maybe the, comp the setup for the merge request is specifically, is it, kind of complex, so we have this tunnel, I can connect directly to his machine, uh, and I log in to his local environment and see exactly what he's seeing. Uh, and I can review from there. And then we have review apps, which in theory can replace uh, GDK and set up, set up save, safe setup time when you're reviewing things. Um, but depending on what you're doing, it can sometimes um, lead to spending more time setting up everything and creating all of the data that you need. Uh, and that's why I linked to the issue there to upvote um, the population populating review apps with seed data for test and development. Um, so I see a lot of people writing, please talk. Okay, no one talks, so I'm going, going to read what people have written. <laughs> so, but, uh, so uh, Lucas suggested uh, screen captures video to show behavior. That's a really good point. I forgot to mention uh, screenshots slash video captures. Yeah. Um, and then we have a lot of other people writing other things. Tim, you want to say something? Yeah, so we, I discussed this, this the same thing because it's not only for UX, but it's also for PNs and, and especially other engineers that are reviewing cross speciality wise as especially as you are having more and more domain topics in specifically in CICD and, and all those topics it's very hard to get that stuff set up um, so we had the idea and the discussion I think it was in December or so um, to create something like a GDK helper tool so that basically you can call on a different URL uh, a UI where you can say, okay, I want to add to my GDK a repository with different file types. I want to create a repository with CI CD pipelines. I want to connect to a runner or something like that, which, of, which would be super nice because you simply start an instance, click three buttons. Uh, as you do, the, the example would be the view CLI UI, which is going in the same direction where you do simply project setup, click five buttons and ta-da, you have a perfect configuration for a thing. But of course, this would need engineering time and might make sense, but uh, we definitely should follow that up if that is across groups, a big topic uh, for UX front-enders, back-enders. Um, I will have a look and, and try to follow this up, how hard this could be so that we figure out, okay, 
there is something that might be a quick win and see if that works, then we can extend it also to more and more topics. As every instance has also their own API and can import stuff, we can also simply import uh, repositories that we have sitting on gitlab.com and import them uh, by a click and, and, and set up uh, scripts that the same stuff that we have for our tests. Uh, we can also run that against an instance and that shouldn't be too hard. And if we can save for everyone 10 minutes per day, we have saved already a lot of time. I will pick that up on my side. Yeah, That's so, uh, yeah, I think you, you touched on a good point. Uh, and I, I remember some situations when I was reviewing a merge request uh, locally, and um, I managed to find a weird scenario where something broke, and I not only had to report, okay, this is happening, this is a bug that needs to be fixed. Uh, sometimes it was kind of specific, the way you get into that uh, specific scenario that I had to also describe how you could create that scenario. So, and then the developer would have on this local instance to create that scenario and review it, blah, blah, blah. So I think there's a lot of time that we're, spending here unnecessarily and that we could uh, streamline if we everyone was working with the same thing same thing it was just a matter of linking and i think that's what people expect the review apps could bring and uh, also another thing that maybe we should be doing that we're not doing today um, is is listing out what are the scenarios that we as UX designers will look out for specifically. Sometimes there is a, a scenario um, that uh, you remember when you're testing, but most of the scenarios, I think we're already able to describe and list even before implementation begins so that developers can already implement and test those scenarios when they're implementing before doing some commits. Uh, that is some things that I usually find happen is it's just something that I find um, would be very uh, obvious, like a, a case where you're resizing the browser and a button gets under another button or it, the layout breaks completely. It's, for me, it's something that is pretty obvious, but if, maybe if we write down all of the cases that we will be testing, um, ultimately we will need very light UX review work. And I think that's where we sh what we sh should all be striving for. And that's also one of the reasons why we're so focused on the GitLab UI and pajamas is that we can remove as much as possible UX from the equ equation and that developers can do their work without having to be stop to do a review or to ask things from UX. Okay, so if no one else has anything else to say, and I talked a lot, so I probably discourage everyone from continue talking. <laughs> uh, that's what I do, basically. Um, that's not true at all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Christy. I, I feel better now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye-bye.